I like hanging with them. Um, so now, uh, my cousin, I go home that night to my cousin's house, and, and this older skinhead said, you know, when are you going to shave this shit off your head? And he kind of slapped me in my hair. And, I, and my cousin looked at me and said, yeah, you, you know, you want to shave it? Or I, I kind of asked him, is it okay if I shave it? And he said, sure, you know, you want to shave it, let's do it. So they take me out on this back porch, and they all get, every guy that was there that night came outside on the back porch with the clippers, and each guy would do one row of my hair for me. And that kind of, I was in. You know, there's no initiation. There was no big, uh, no big, you know, got to go out and do anything to anybody. They just liked me, so I was in. So the rest of that summer, I start learning about National Socialism, Communism, left wing, right wing, um, you know, stuff that a normal 14 year old kid, you know, doesn't really care about, but I was getting into it. Then I started learning about the Bible and how to hate through the Bible, and uh, that's a lot of the, the hate groups use the Bible as, as uh, a teaching, how to hate. You know, they use the story of Adam and Eve and the conception of, uh, of uh, Cain as the, the seed of the devil, and Abel is, is the real son of Adam and Eve. Now you might think this is all pretty wacky, but all religions do it. You know, you have, you know, Osama, who does it with, you know, you have the Taliban who do it with the Quran. You have, you know, hardcore Zionists who do it with the Torah. So every religion teaches you how to, that teaches you that you are more superior because you believe in this belief and the color of your skin. They all do it. So, and I would go up to these Bible studies and I would learn about these stories about Cain and Abel. Now, I was born and raised very Irish Catholic. Made all my sacraments as a kid. My whole family revolves around the church. Um, and I remember thinking, you know, Father Wassel never taught me this at church. I've never heard these stories before. So, uh, so when I would ask those questions, like, how come Father Wassel, how come my priest never taught me these stories? And they say, because that's Judeo Christianity. You know, they want you to worship the Jews. It's, it's a fake religion. You've been lied to your whole life. Here's the truth. Accept it, you know, and be a, a, an Aryan soldier for God. Or just keep being, on, being duped by everybody. Look at you. You've been duped your whole life. So uh, I accepted it. I get real into the movement. I go back to Philadelphia. I start recruiting. I, I, I was always very good at getting kids into what I was doing. If I was starting a new hockey team, whatever it might have been, I was just one of those people that could get people to do what I'd like to do too. Just was, you know. So I'm recruiting all these kids throughout the city, um, and I want to say, you know, you don't need to hear all the violent stuff, but there's just tons of violence all the time, fighting against other gangs, fighting, you know, going gay bashing, homeless bashing. Um, if any of you guys have ever seen the movie Clockwork Orange, that was like our mantra, you know, go out and you know, wreck homeless people, um, and that was our camaraderie. You know, it sounds kind of weird and it's pretty evil, but we didn't go out and shoot basketballs with each other and for camaraderie we went out and we rolled people or we went out and got the shit kicked out of us too. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, the violence came back to us full all the time. Uh, there was tons of communist groups out there that always were trying to jump us and anti-racist groups who were liberal but their whole job as liberals was to kick the shit out of us so we fight with them all the time and then there was just the normal street gangs too. So now um, I get a bunch of warrants put out for my arrest. I've been in and out of juvenile hall I go and I hide out, and I wound up making my way out to Springfield, Illinois. And it, you have to read the book. There's a, a huge, a couple of huge crazy things that happened to me between there. But uh, I get out to Springfield, and this is 1992. So uh, the gang situation in 90, the early 90s, the gangs were really big in America. It was you know, getting out of bloods, crips, all that. Uh, in Springfield, Illinois, there was gangs that came from Chicago and East St. Louis. You had the Gangster Disciples, Vice Lords, uh, Maniac Latin Disciples. I mean, you had them all. Uh, the Latin Kings. Uh, who else did you have? You had a couple white gangs, but they were. I mean, think about it. 1992. Who was like the big white gangster? Was fucking Vanilla Ice. You know, so they weren't getting much respect. The white gangs. They were too busy shaving you know, lines in their eyebrows and stuff to. to so uh, one of the kids that we were involved with there went to the local high school. Now again, this is uh, the date myself, but there's no internet back then. So what we did was to recruit people is we would get a PO box number. You go to your local post office, you buy a PO box number. We get flyers and we just put on the bottom if you want to be know more about our, our gang or our organization, you know, write to us or if you want to join us, write to us or just come find us. 
So we get all these flyers made and we give them to this kid at the local high school and tell him to go recruit in high school for us. Well, he goes around and he puts all the flyers in everybody's locker, you know, that little air slot. And there's, it's a very diverse school, right? So he's putting them in like the black kids' lockers and the Latino kids' lockers. He don't know. He's just putting them through everyone's locker. And uh, some of them were gangbangers, some weren't, but uh, the gangbangers and I think even a couple of the jock kids went up to him after they found these and said, you know, we kicked your ass. And he called us up and said, can you meet me outside of school? So there's two other skinheads with me at the time there. There's only four of us. So we go and we meet him outside of the school, right at the, as soon as the bell rang. Now at the time I had a big swap stick on my neck, I got tattoos all on my head, you know. A little different than the high school scene. So when he comes running out and he comes right to us, all the kids that were about to jump him were kind of like, whoa, you know, and they're kind of like, never mind. Uh, these guys look nuts type thing. So, so now at the high school you have all the gangbangers, and there was a lot of them, hung up on this wall, and they would all sit up there, and, and it appears, there's people and folks, that's the two main category of gangs, you know, all the gangs fall under this category, and they hate each other, there's five points and six point stars. So they all kind of hang together because they're just all under the same thing, you know, thugging, want to be thugging, whatever you want to call it. Then in the main parking lot, there's all the preps and the jocks and normies. And then on the other side, where there was a grassy hill, with all these trees, with all the skaters, the goth kids, the you know alternative kids, punk kids, whatever, and that's who our friend is friends with, just like I was. So he says, "Hey, will you guys come and hang out with my friends over here?" And we said, "Sure, we'll come hang with you." So now everyone's outside of school, and we're sitting with them. And I'm like, "Why don't you guys? They all have skateboards." So I'm like, "Why don't you guys all go hang over by the wall? You know, you just can skate over there." And they said, "No, it's better if we sit here. Uh, people throw shit at us all the time." And you're right by the trees, usually that'll break the fall of things people throw at us. So we're sitting there talking and here comes a D battery, comes right through the trees, lands right by me and this kid that I was just talking to. And all you hear from the main part of the parking lot is, get out of our school, you fucking freaks. And the kid just gave me this little smirky look like I told you so. I said, well, we'll go take care of that. And I grabbed my two buddies. I didn't want to grab anyone from the school because I didn't want any of these kids getting in trouble. Just me and my two buddies, we went over to the parking lot where it came from and there's like 50 kids there. And we just went on. And we said, uh, hey, who threw it? And you know, all the kids at school, Johnny threw it. No, you threw it. No, you're... Oh, come on, don't blame me. You threw it, you know? And I knew we were never going to get to who threw it. No one was ever going to tell us. So uh, I just said, how about this? If anyone throws anything again, I'm not asking. We're just coming over. And this one kid was like, all right, cool, man. And no one ever threw anything at them. Anytime we were there, no one ever threw anything at the punk rock kids again, the skater kids. So I know that this is going to be the kids that we're going to recruit. Like I said, in Philly, I was good at getting them into it. At, you know, parts of Jersey, uh, Delaware. I mean, we, I was always good at getting people into this. So now when you're in an area, and, and I'm going to use this town as, a, as an example, uh, if I'm recruiting in, in, in Washington, Pennsylvania, and I'm at a high school, who do I want to recruit? Do I want to go and make sure I recruit the tough guys? Kind of. You know, they're not a top priority. They're not. Uh, the smart kids, yeah. Usually they're not, they lack in the tough division too, if they're, you know what I mean? So if they come, they come. Uh, do I want to recruit the good looking guys? No, because then I have competition, so I don't want to recruit the good looking guys. <laughs> so who do I want to get into this? And it's 100% of the time I always want to recruit the same person, and that's a boy with a car. If I recruit boys with cars, then I get the guy, you know, you never high school, everyone piles into their one fucking kid's car. So I just really recruit two, three, four of those guys with cars. That's 20 new members. Because and I, uh, little tricks, you know. It's I know he's starting to want to hang out with us, but he doesn't look like us yet. He still has the trench coat, you know, skater, combat boot look. And uh, so uh, I'll be driving in his car, and I'll be in the front seat with him, and all his friends will be pounding in the back, and you know, and they're kind of in all of the tattoos and stuff, you know, to be honest. And so. 